Hi everyone, let's talk about why this fish went from ugly to irresistible. Here we go. Okay, the fish you were just looking at that underwent that huge transformation is my redfin borlei. And before I get too far into the fish food that I'm using that I believe is responsible for that change, as well as a few other tips that'll help your fish color up, I wanna give a shout out to the viewers who watched my last video in the upper left corner where I went over every fish in my 240 gallon African cichlid tank Alcatraz. I went over the species and the names that I've given those fish, but some of them I was a little uncertain about the species and some didn't have names. So I had some help identifying those fish and many of you gave some awesome name suggestions for my fish. Thanks to Damson2809 for IDing this Red Empress OB. He's a real looker, wouldn't you say? Not my favorite OB, but pretty nice. In my prior video, I mislabeled this guy as a deep water hap. Thanks to Damson2809 again for pointing out that he's a star sapphire that doesn't have many speckles. Maybe they'll come later. You really know your stuff, Damson2809. Park Bench Aquatics and Squatch's Cichlids both confirmed my suspicion that this fella is a Red Empress. Park Bench said he's just an ugly one. I believe he used the word fugly. Maybe he'll blossom sometime in the future. That's Moby, my blue dolphin, who looks like he's trying to ride him for some reason. Squatch's Cichlids thinks this here nut job is an albino dragon blood. I had my suspicions, but I didn't think the albino dragon bloods were as orange as this guy is. Still not 100% certain about this ID. Oh, here he goes building his crazy fish lair. Coming to kill ya! Real piece of work, this one. Okay, so you might be wondering how an expert on African cichlids can possibly have a tank full of cichlids and not know everything about every single one of them. Well, here's the thing. I never said I was an expert. I'm just a crazy guy who likes crazy fish. And when I learn something new about my fish, I just like to share it with you guys. And finally, Boris the Redfin Borlei. I had a few good name ideas from different viewers, but Polly Lewis 9611 suggestion of Boris Karloff had me instantly. A fish this beautiful needs a great name. And you can tell he thinks he's a good looking stud too, can't you? Too sexy. And here's my boy Ferg the Second, making sure we notice him. He sure loves the camera. Boris has a great deep reddish tone all over his body with the coloration even dipping into the blue on his face and caudal fin. Here's a video of him a few months ago. He was just an old drab fellow who was easy to overlook. So why the change? Well, I'll get to that. But first, why don't you get to hitting those like and subscribe buttons? And for the love of Pete, leave a comment. It really helps the channel. Now check out this red ruby peacock from a few months ago. Not bad, but he could stand a little boost in my Taiwan reef. A little pale, wouldn't you agree? And now here they both are on the lower right of your screen. Definitely deeper colors in my expert opinion. I mean, in my regular opinion, not an expert. Like I already said. Okay, now for the reason you're here, how to get your fish to color up. There are a lot of things you can do, actually three main things that you can do to make sure your fish have the best color they can have. The first thing you can do is make sure that you get your fish from a reputable breeder. And it may be too late for that already, but in the future, make sure you get one that has good reviews. If you see that the breeder has a lot of negative reviews on different websites, then that's the really bad sign and you're probably not going to get the best fish. And another thing is if they offer three day shipping or shipping through the post office, that's a bad sign too. If they don't care enough to get their fish there the next day, even though it's gonna cost you more money and maybe even lose some customers, then I would just stay away from them. The second thing you can do to make sure your fish have really great color is to get the water parameters the best that they can be. So do your water changes. If your tank needs you to do a water change every week, then do it every week. And if you need to do it every month, then do it once a month. So with African cichlids, which is mainly what I'm talking about here, I want my water parameters to be like my pH around seven and a half to eight and a half and my water hardness pretty hard. I mean, they like it like a rock pretty much. Rock on. So I don't chase any of those parameters, but what I do is I just make sure that I get it as close as I can. And to do that with my tank, I just have aragonite sand in there and that keeps the pH up around 7.8. The third thing you can do is make sure that you're feeding them the right food. So let's get into that. I like to mix it up and give them a variety. I mean, one fish food is gonna have some things that are good for your fish and maybe missing something, but if you give it another quality fish food, that'll help to round it out and give them everything they need. I just mix together North Fin and Extreme Pellets and that gives them a good variety. And I usually don't give them any flakes in my African cichlid tank. It can help cloud the water a little bit because of the phosphates. A lot of fish keepers do it and there doesn't seem to be a problem, I just don't. So recently I switched over to another food that helped my fish color up even more. And that was this TDL Chroma Boost that YouTube user Poohhead recommended to me. 
and at first I was skeptical because I thought, well, if it's if it's boosting the colors of your fish, it probably has some dyes or things like that that aren't good for them. If I look at the ingredients on this TDO Chroma Boost, the first four are fish meal, krill meal, squid meal, and fish oil, and then it's followed by hematococcus, which is actually a, an algae, a red algae that helps boost the reds in your fish. One thing about this TDO Chroma Boost is that it really boosts the reds, but I didn't notice that it did anything for the blues in my fish. And that makes sense since it's a red algae that's doing the coloration. Here's your boy feeding these psychos just over a month ago. This is when I started feeding them only the TDO Chroma Boost twice daily. No more North Fin or Extreme Pellets. And they love it. Here they are getting fed now. After two weeks, I started blending the TDO in with the North Fin and Extreme Pellets. About a quarter of the food being TDO. I haven't noticed a fall off in the fish coloration since then. I used to feed once per day, but I changed it to twice daily based on a viewer recommendation in lesser amounts to try to reduce aggression. And here's me hand feeding for the second. Oh, and Gary the Venustus comes away with a prize. He stole my yum yum. Well, let's try again. Firk has an eating disorder, too dumb to find food. And he gets it. He's really done it. a boy, Firk. I'm not saying you need to get TDO Chroma Boost to help your fish color up, but it worked for me. Now, do you have any fish that you have secret tips on how you got them to color up? Or maybe you have some fish that you just can't get to color up no matter what you do. Let me know in the comments, either way. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. And a special thanks to both Des Cutter and Squatch's Cichlids for the super awesome name Victor for my 3-inch long VC10. Man, I still got goosebumps over that one.